Hi guys, Crystal here, the real estate industry whistleblower, self-appointed of course. My website is realestateindustrywhistleblower.com and of course savvybroker.com. And I want to talk to you about E&O insurance. I was a naive young realtor, you know, thinking I opened my own real estate office. I went to school a week. A year later, I went to school another week, opened my own real estate office and thought I could really change the industry. You know, insurance wasn't mandatory in my state, but I got it because I wanted to protect the real estate consumer. I naively thought that if I had you know insurance, that it would protect the consumer. I didn't really care about protecting me because I knew that I wasn't going to lie, cheat, or steal. It was all going to be great. It, you know, I was going to be an honest realtor. I was going to hire a bunch of honest realtors, and it was all going to be good. So I got you know insurance, even though it wasn't mandatory, and I proceeded with my real estate career. Several years later, I realized that the E&O insurance wasn't going to help my buyers. So I had a buyer that got into a really bad situation where the listing agent lied. I was a buyer's agent. The listing agent failed to disclose some really big known issues. And with this, the buyer lost a lot of money and their life was actually even in danger. The house was uninhabitable and there was nothing I could do to help them, right? My E&O you know, insurance certainly didn't help them. So I found out through this from my E&O you know, insurance company that my E&O you know, insurance is to protect me from the real estate consumer. It is not intended to protect the real estate consumer. However, I've read reports where E&O you know, insurance companies have went to with realtors and went to state governments and pushed mandatory real estate E&O you know, insurance. They say, two reasons, they say it protects the realtor from frivolous lawsuits and a frivolous lawsuit means where you, the real estate consumer, need to sue the realtor because you've lost everything that's frivolous to them. And it also protects the consumer. That's what they said. And so they've got, you know, insurance mandatory in states like Idaho, I think Oregon, I don't even know all the states, but E&O insurance is mandatory in many states. So what E&O insurance does is when you, the real estate consumer, come to me, the realtor, which I'm an ex-realtor now, I quit the National Association of Realtors, proud of it. When you come to a realtor and you want to sue them because you've proven that they lied to you and you've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars, your kids are sick because of, you know, mold, or there's problems with the foundation, or pipes burst in the wall, or whatever it is. Basically, the E&O insurance, what it does is it goes and it shuts the realtor's door, and puts up a sign that says closed. That means that you, the real estate consumer, stay back. They protect the realtor from the real estate consumer. There's nothing the real estate consumer can do to get through that door. The E&O insurance will fight for years. You don't have enough money to go up against them. You could be a multimillionaire, you could have proven fraud, dead to rights, and you cannot fight the realtor. Now, if they're a franchise, like Century 21, ERA, Cobble Banker, and Sotheby's, who are all owned by the same company, which is sometimes called Rheology, sometimes called Apollo Management, I don't know what they are now, because Rheology went bankrupt in the last six months, they all own all these real estate offices, so you think you're going from one office to the next. Really, they all own the same. So they have really big, high-powered attorneys. They have tons of money and tons of engineers, and just keep you in court year after year after year. You get so stressed out. You lose sleep. Your family falls apart. Hundreds of thousands of dollars thrown away, and then you lose because the realtor, well, they win. They win on little things like um, adverse material fact. What is an adverse material fact? Well, an adverse material fact is something that comes up later after you buy that you didn't really know. So you didn't know it was a problem, but it comes up later. But the law says the realtor has to tell you any known adverse material facts. The trick is with adverse material facts is that the realtor can say, well, I thought it was fixed. I thought the seller fixed it. So if it was something the realtor honestly believed that it wouldn't come up for the buyer ever in the future, well then, they get off scot-free. 
So realtors, E&O insurance, and I've read several newsletters and associations everywhere that talk about getting stronger and stronger E&O insurance and making sure that it's mandatory. Why would they want it to be mandatory? Why do they make states force realtors to get mandatory insurance to protect themselves? Well, the realtors have tons of money. They lobby Washington, right? They're a really big deal. You know, insurance companies have tons of money. The state local boards, they don't have tons of money. And they can't handle the stress that the realtors and the giant insurance companies put on them. So they're, okay, okay, it'll protect the consumer, it'll protect the realtors' jobs, let's just do it. But the real key here is that if every realtor has E&O you know, insurance and the E&O insurance company fights really, really hard for the realtor and the consumer loses every single time, then the realtors have a clean slate, right? They have no lawsuits, no precedents. They never have to pay anything. They never have to answer to the real estate consumers, you know, and they're not ever forced to pay penalties and ethics is not law and it doesn't matter and we'll go into all that later. But the E&O insurance will will make it so that they have a clean slate. So if everybody can make it, because they claim that all real estate consumers' lawsuits are frivolous. They pretend it's just frivolous ones, but I've seen some really bad stuff. And the consumer gets hurt, and they've got black and white that the realtor committed fraud. They've got the, the, a seller or a buyer committed fraud on them. They've got proof. But the E&O insurance keeps them in court so long that their life has changed forever. So E&O insurance being mandatory is a crime against the real estate consumer on every single level. Find out more about E&O insurance. Don't ask your realtor if they have it. You know, do you have E&O insurance? Oh good, now I know I'm protected. I've had people do that. I see places online where people talk about, well ask your realtor if they have E&O insurance. You might as well go up to your realtor and say, oh do you have that insurance that protects you against me if you lie to me? Yep, I got it. Alright, just wanted to make sure. So find out more about E&O insurance. Don't expect it to protect you because it won't. And ask questions. Ask the realtors. Ask your state legislative bodies. You know, ask, ask more questions. Why is E&O insurance mandatory? Who cares about E&O insurance? I don't care about it anymore. I don't even want it. Why do I want to pay tons of money to protect me? I mean, I can understand that I, of course, would like to protect my job, my career, but I wanted to protect the consumer. I wanted to be able to show them a house, and if a pipe burst in the wall that I didn't know was there, hence an error or an admission, my insurance would cover them. I really wanted to get my real estate consumers back. I had no way. There's no protection for the real estate consumer in the real estate industry. Check out realestateindustrywhistleblower.com and find out more about what you need to know about the truth about real estate.